Hey folks, in this episode we're going to learn how to install and use the Discombobulator add-on that comes shipped with Blender. It's quite a cool name, Discombobulator. It's one of my favourite add-ons uh, for Blender. Um, it's very versatile, uh, creates some excellent results, high detail in a very short space of time. As you can see by this scene, it's great for making panelling, uh, which is kind of suitable for corridors, spaceships, you know, sci-fi kind of scenes. So, without further ado, let's get to it. So in this basic scene here, I've just got a plane. I've added two materials. Um, and the reason I've added two materials, if we go back to the example scene, is on these top faces, I've got one material, and on the sides of the faces, I've got another material. They're both metallic materials. I'll show you the materials. Let's just hide that. Go back to the plane. Um, the first material, it's set to a grey value. It's metallic with a roughness of 0.75. The second material, again, it's metallic, set to a value of 1, so it's nice and bright, uh, with a roughness of 0.333. So before you can use this add-on, you need to activate it. So we go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then just type in Discom and it should appear, Discombobulator. Click the tick box, and if you want to use this next time without having to load it every time when you open Blender, you just click Save Preferences. And then next time you open Blender, it will be ready to use. So I'll select the plane, I'll go into Edit Mode, I've subdivided it um, just once. You can easily subdivide this, so you just, you know, s select your plane in edit mode, then you'd go to subdivide. I'm going to want to do that because I've already done it. And then what we do, we just select the faces that we want to discombobulate. Uh, take into consideration this only works with quads, it won't work with tries or polys. So quads is the only way you'll get this to work. So in edit mode, select the faces that you want to discombobulate. You then shift A and then select discombobulator. It brings up this menu here. It's good to start with lower values. So I've set the max, uh, the minimum height to 0.025 and the max height to 0.1 with a taper of 0.15% and a max taper of 0.35%. I'm going to have one repeat protrusions and I'm going to have one doodads number. Then you just click OK. This menu will shrink down to here but then you can re-expand it before clicking anything else and that will give you the opportunity to then see in real time the changes that you make. I will make one um, observation on this. I would not go too crazy on the protrusions uh, because it will make Blender crash and it can take a long time to calculate. So to start with I'll just go for one protrusion and the important thing here with your materials so this will be material 0 and this will be material 1. So you set your top mat material to 0 and your side protrusions mat to 1. Um, if you don't, then basically that's what happens, and then I can also change it around like this. So I've set my materials OK. Um, and that basically generates one mesh there. I'm going to delete this mesh, and I'm going to do it again, because th it can get a bit confusing, especially when you've got loads of discombobulated meshes in your scene. So again, in edit mode, I'm going to select two faces, I'm going to hit discombobulator. This is where it gets a bit confusing. So if I were to select two protrusions and then OK that into the system, it's actually generated two meshes here. So the top mesh generally is the one with the lower detail. And then the second mesh is the one with the higher detail. So if you want the higher detail, you just delete the lower detail one. Also, you can kind of go into inception on this. So I'd select these two faces, for example. I'll go to discombobulator. 
I'm going to set the Petrucians just to one. I'll OK that. And now it's just generated this one mesh. And then you can go into edit mode on this, for example. And then you can discombobulate those meshes. Maybe I'll turn up the Petrucians to one and I'll bring down the max to point zero seven five for example um, bring down the max taper to maybe point two point two five percent and then I'd okay that again this is going to generate two meshes so the first mesh would be there the lower detail mesh and the bottom mesh will be the higher detail mesh so I'll delete that first one because there's no need to have overlaying geometry and yeah you can basically keep going into inception and you get high detail really fast which is absolutely great so let's mute that I'll just give you another use case scenario so in this collection I've uh, got a torus um, I'll select some face edge loops or face loops this is using shift out and then clicking right click left click sorry you can see my screencast keys are down here so and then I'd add the discombobulator so again shift a discombobulator I'll drag this over here so I can see what I'm doing I'll do repeat protrusions down to one I'd click OK and then I've got the uh, discombobulated mesh there without the torus, with the torus um, and then I'll select my torus again this, oh, let me just mute that then I'll click Control i which is invert selection I'll discombobulate that but this time I'll use two protrusions uh, if you notice up here it's going to generate two meshes because I've selected two on here so I'll OK that. It's generated two meshes. Again, the bottom one is high detail, the top one is low detail. So if I mute the bottom one, there's the low detail. We'll delete that and we'll just keep the high detail. And then in combination, that's the result. Again, I set the torus up with the correct materials already so you know I've got material 0 and material 1 and that's relayed onto here so the edge the edges is material 1 and the front faces are material 0 so we'll close that I'll give you another use case which is this corridor so it's a simple scene basically it's a cube with the front and back face which is deleted uh, on this one I've actually got three materials so I've got the material 0 1 and I've added a third material which is 0 2 um, which is going to be for the floor you'll come into a problem with this though because with a cube or the default cube all the faces are pointing outward so I can show that by selecting face orientation um, normally what will happen if I go where is it um, object oh hang on I've got to go to edit mode so I select all faces go to normal to flip usually what will happen when you've got a cube all the outward faces will be blue and all the inward faces will be red um, but if I was to discombobulate this mesh I'll just for a quick example discombobulate go to protrusions one all the discombobulated um, geometry is going to be on the outward faces and if you're doing a corridor you don't want that you want them on the inside so we'll delete that and how to get around that is you go you select your corridor select everything then you go to mesh normals flip and you want the blue to be on the inside in this case scenario um, and from there 
I've got all my material set up. I'll set my oh, let me get rid of that face orientation so we can see what we're doing. So my material for the floor is already set up, so I've assigned that. And then we'll just select, say, for example, that, 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 and that. And then we'll discombobulate that with protrusions set to one again. And then OK. Ooh, it's generated a discombobulated mesh there, so I'm just going to drag that into the corridor collection. Then I'll select the corridor base mesh again, and then I'll select the relevant faces. I'll discombobulate that. Set the protrusions to two, and click OK. And then we've got more detail. Again, it will have generated two meshes, so it's generated the low detail mesh at the top and the high detail mesh at the bottom. So I don't want the top lower detail, so I'll just delete that. I'll activate the higher detail, I'll drag that into my corridor collection, and then I'm going to select both of the discombobulated meshes and then control J to join mesh so then it's literally just one mesh now and then what I'll do is I'll go back to the corridor I'll apply I mean I'll activate activate the array modifier I'll then select the discombobulated mesh shift select for corridor and then click, click control L and then link modifiers and then it will copy the modifier for the array. Um, I'll give you a little bonus tip with this so if you really want to make this look good uh, it's a good practice to add a bevel modifier I usually use say three Oh, hang on, I've added that to the wrong mesh. Never mind. Hang on, let's take that off. Select the discombobulated mesh, and then I'll add the bevel modifier, and instantly you can see better results. Oh, let me get out of there. I'll go back to the example scene now, because I've already set that up. So, the example scene here, for example, select the discombobulated mesh and then I'll apply the bevel modifier and yeah the detail just stands out a lot better so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial uh, if you found it useful or extracted any value from this content you can support my channel by clicking the like button if you want to see more up-and-coming tutorials hit subscribe thank you for watching